guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is the Scottish Koala and today we are taking a look at some gameplay footage of the AMX-13 SS-11. The worst tank in the game. Or is it? Well, let's find out. Now the AMX-13, as I'm sure you're aware, is the most heavily represented vehicle in the French tank tree. And they're not light tanks so much as they are scout tanks. I would assume that the scouting mechanics added in the same update were added specifically for these vehicles and just ended up being given to various other nations light tanks to keep people happy. Because of that, this tank absolutely shines when in perhaps a two or three man squadron and really struggles on its own. The gun is an issue, or rather the shells are, and the missiles, while good to have, can prove uh, finicky. But I'm not letting this tank get by with a it's okay in a squadron rating. No, I wanted to see how this thing does solo. We're on the coastal time part of Normandy facing off with the Allies against the Germans this match, which means I could see anything from Tiger ones to Leopard ones. But looking around, I've seen a fair amount of Lorraine 40Ts, so it's a good chance we've gotten ourselves a down tier. Now this is both a good and a bad thing, and that's what I want to focus on in this video. This is one of those tanks that has a vastly different playstyle for down tiers as it does for up tiers. With the exception of the mouse, battle ratings of 6.7 to 7.3 are really the pinnacle of the armour meta in this game. Beyond that, penetration negates armour thickness and mobility and fire rate rule the roost. These battle ratings are also where we start to see the emergence of the main battle tank family. And so the tanks at these battle ratings have to be able to deal with both types of threats. The AMX-13 SS-11 does this in a different way to every other tank in the game, which is what led me initially to believe that this tank was underperforming. Now in fact, having put some significant time into learning this vehicle's playstyle, and playing it far more seriously than I did in the first days of the tank's introduction, I've come to realise that this tank is, uh, exceptional. Now I'm sure all of you guys have seen this tank fleet before, and know all about its six-shot drum magazines, oscillating turret, the shells it fires and whatnot. That's why in this video I want to focus on how the tank functions within the meta of the game and what makes it unique. I began this match with the intention of playing the monument just up on the promenade to my left, but ended up down here and this is what this tank is for a lot of its games. Patient. You don't play it like a light tank rushing past the halfway point of the map to try and side shot enemies at point blank range. You don't play it like an MBT and you certainly don't play it like a medium or a heavy. Our first target here is an RU251 who obviously thought he had a chance to move from cover to cover before anybody could shoot at him, and uh, that's why you're wrong, buddy. Now unfortunately neither of the good shots we put into him took him out, and we're not going to get another chance as he's in good cover. Now you'll notice that I'm not using the SS-11 missiles, and that's because these things are quite difficult to use when your tank isn't on flat ground. They're WASD controlled and attached to an oscillating and therefore fully movable turret, but it's no matter as the RU-251 attempted to fire from his damaged cannon and ripped his tank apart, giving us a nice kill without ever having to show my tank to any other enemies. And it was that shot right there that made me realise what this tank is. And everything clicked from there. See, other tanks at this tier excel at dealing with either the World War II methodology of the light, medium and heavy tank families, or the post-war methodology of MBTs, and when faced with that design language they're not so well equipped to deal with, it's down to player skill to compensate. This tank, however, does it for you. You have your SS-11 missiles for taking out heavily armoured targets that follow the Second World War's heavy tank design philosophy, while your gun is easily capable of dealing with lightly armoured vehicles and the early manifestations of the main battle tank design, of which the RU-251, which in many ways is the direct rival of this tank, is really the baby of the family. What this means is that the tank excels at exactly the battle rating it's placed at, 6.7. And when I realised that, I wondered how I could have ever doubted this tank at all. All of a sudden, everything clicked. This is not the worst tank in the game. It's one of very few tanks whose job is to be able to effectively counter every type of opponent it could face. It's a jack of all trades, a design language that often turns out to be less than ideal. That phrase is usually followed by master of none for a reason. But this time, it worked. Where my issue came from earlier is using the vehicle's two distinct weapon systems at the wrong times. ATGMs, after all, have always been reserved for the upper ends of the tank trees, with main battle tanks ruling the shop, while lower down it's all based on guns and firepower. The AMX-13 SS-11 is the exact opposite, the counterculture of the tank world. For main battle tanks that prioritise mobility over thick armour, your counter is your cheeky little 75mm cannon. Whereas for more heavily armoured World War II tanks that don't have quite the reactionary ability, you have four guided missiles to send their way. 
Unfortunately, like I said, these things can be finicky, but luckily they did enough damage to that King Tiger that we were able to take him out with a cheeky breaky side shot. This whole philosophy sets the tank apart significantly, even from the other AMX-13 variants, which sit at either higher or lower tiers and therefore have very different functions. Now of course, these are not rules, Oftentimes, I've killed Panther 2s in a single shot at a side armour, or used ATGMs against Leopards or Vickers MBTs, but this is, I believe, a very good way of looking at the tank, especially if you do happen to be struggling with it. Against the heavier World War II tank families, the AMX-13 SS-11 is a long-range, easily concealed ATGM sniper, while against the softer MBTs, it's an ambush predator. Now, don't get me wrong, this tank is far from perfect. The comparatively low penetration and lack of explosive filler often lets you down, and the ATGMs don't compare to those at higher tiers. The mobility is good, but no contest to the RU251, and the survivability is next to non-existent. But were any of these issues to be improved upon, the tank would have received a higher battle rating, and that would take away from its unique position, right at the end of one area of tank design, and on the cusp of another. Unfortunately, you don't always get optimum circumstances, however, urban maps are going to get you killed every time unless you have good supporting teammates, and there are some tanks, like the American Heavy Tank family at this tier, that you literally can't penetrate with your gun no matter what. These are the exact targets that you'd need to use your SS-11 missiles for, but on an urban map, well, good luck. So now having almost entirely ignored the gameplay itself, which in turn wasn't the greatest showcase of the capabilities of this tank, just some footage I had lying around as I've been quite busy over the last few days, I'll say that I hope to get a squadron together to play this tank as a support slash scout tank and see how it does in that role. Perhaps I'll do that during my live stream this Friday. <coughs> Shameless plug. <coughs> but even by itself, this tank is no pushover. It's not the worst tank in the game, or even at its tier, but rather it's a perfect example of a jack of all trades vehicle and that makes it very good indeed. So lads, if you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Come follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, Discord, and all the rest, and I will see you next video. The a heavy case made infantry support vehicle built on the Tiger 1 chassis and was created by the Germans with the purpose of destroying heavily fortified buildings with a single shot using its 38cm rocket propelled round. What this means is that the vehicle was not a tank or a tank destroyer, making it very different to say the KV-2, FV-4005 or Storm Hands. Gadget already seems like they struggle to balance these types of vehicles, but the Storm Tiger borders on being classified more in mobile artillery or mortar piece and really doesn't fit anywhere in the matchmaker. It has decent armour, comparable to the King.